and I work as a regional project leader um, for an EU project called Climatic, which actually deals with the effects of climate change. And this project tries to help communities in the northern part of Europe to adapt to the effects of climate change. And uh, here in Ora, um, I mean, everyone notices that the winters are getting sh a bit shorter and that you are affected. You will get warmer temperatures, you will get more rainfall, etc. And I also know that the EU Commission is um, very anxious to get this work on adaptation issues started. And I was wondering, uh, when it comes to the conference in Copenhagen, uh, I know that the reductions of... of um, uh, emissions is of course on top but how will you be working with the adaptation issues and we also know that we would call see the effects of climate change very hard in, in these regions and uh, especially for the indigenous people um, but how will the EU uh, be able to help those poorer countries those developing countries with no um, financial possibilities to help their people uh, I would like to hear some of your on your thoughts about that. Thank you. Yes, uh, you are right. Uh, adaptation to the, to the in order to face the impacts of climate change is very important, especially for the most vulnerable, the least developed countries, where the impacts will be uh, felt um, more seriously, and uh, also for uh, group groups of people, vulnerable people within the European Union and some regions in the European Union. So we have the international dimension and the internal European Union uh, dimension. And we are taking actions for, for both. For the European Union, we have a, a published, I'm sure you, you know about it, a communication adaptation paper and communication which describes uh, how we shall deal with the problems. Uh, because, you, you know, we, we, we speak about global warming, uh, but actually it does not mean that uh, the north will become warmer and the south warmer. It could be, could be climate instability. For example, if the Gulf Stream will change its direction, perhaps uh, weather in the uh, United Kingdom or Denmark will be colder than warmer. So is climate instability and what will happen, it's not very sure and science is not able to exactly prescribe what the, uh, uh, the sequences will be. Now, in uh, the European Union, uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, program or these uh, actions that we have described in our, in our paper. Uh, and adaptation actions are different, of course, from one country to another, from one region to another. It's different, the problem, for example, in Spain, which is drought and water scarcity, that it is in uh, the north of Europe, where it is the melting of the glaciers and all the problems that they are facing, or the melting of the glaciers in the Alps, and the floods that uh, are affecting the areas. or after a while, when the glaciers will melt, they will have a problem uh, regarding water. They will not have enough water. So uh, the impacts are changing, and we do not know how they will affect people. But it is necessary to, 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 to use money and to integrate adaptation policies within all the other policies of the European Union and the member states. Member states have, for example, in their agricultural policy, they have to integrate climate change, T to think that agriculture w perhaps will change because of climate change and to be prepared for it. Health should take into account that perhaps diseases that they were frequent in the south, now they are moving to the north. For example, in Belgium, they didn't have the so-called blue tongue disease, which was a disease of, uh, uh, affecting uh, livestock in uh, northern Africa and now uh, has occurred in Belgium and the Netherlands. So diseases are moving uh, to, uh, to, to the north because of uh, climate change. Regarding the, the countries which are least developed, there of course we need money. 
And uh, this is going to be one of the main issues that we'll discuss in Copenhagen, uh, how we shall finance adaptation actions and plans and programs and strategies in order to help the least developed countries. I have to tell you that there are various programs by uh, our member states, Sweden, for example, is one of them that is already uh, putting money in adaptation programs uh, overseas, especially in least developed countries. Also, the European Union uh, is putting quite a lot of money through the emissions trading system because the emissions trading system is accepting credits for projects in developing countries. And from this money, uh, 2% which is quite a lot, right now is about 200 million euros, is going for adaptation for the Adaptation Fund of the United Nations, which is going to finance projects like this. Uh, but uh, of course, the least developed countries need quite a lot of money. Some countries will disappear. The, some uh, small islands will go, will submerge. The sea level will come over there. People uh, perhaps uh, will need to be removed. Uh, from the, 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 the Tavalu Island, which is, ha, does not have big population, has already come into an agreement with New Zealand, so the people will move to New Zealand after a few years. But this is, for a small island, this can be agreed. But what about if 20 million people have to be removed from Bangladesh if this, uh, the sea level will rise to a meter, which will flood big parts of uh, 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 of uh, Bangladesh, or if 50, 50 centimeters the level of the sea will rise, about 2 million people have to be relocated from the Nile, uh, Nile Delta. So all this have to be taken into account when we are going to discuss in Copenhagen uh, the agreement, and this is the reason that we, we need to work hard, and you, public opinion, the people of the world, it's necessary to mobilize in order to press our leaders, myself including, uh, for a more ambitious agreement in Copenhagen. Can you specify uh, in which conditions the EU will increase their, their um, promise to go from 20 to 30 percent? It's, it's very loose. It only says that if other countries does comparable uh, targets. C can you say anything more about when are yes. you going? Yes. Actually, what we are doing, and uh, Minister Kalgren actually <coughs> spoke about this uh, this morning, uh, what we are going to do, w first of all, we are committed, about 30%. This is our percentage that we have put on the table of the international negotiations. But the European Council has put a condition for this, saying that if other developed countries like the United States, Canada, Japan, Australia, other developed countries will do comparable uh, reductions. And if the developing countries will take actions uh, according to the principle of differentiation and uh, the, uh, their uh, capabilities, uh, which is in the United Nations Framework Agreement. And this will happen uh, as things appear right now in Copenhagen. So there we shall do it. But now we have already put the 30% target on the table. We are committed for it. But whether we shall go to this or not, according to the instructions that I have from the uh, European leaders, is if other countries will make comparable uh, reductions. And I hope that this will be the case because this is what science is asking us to do. Comparable targets, are they the same targets? Not exactly the same. Is 30% as a group, is a collective reduction. But collectively, the developed countries in the midterm, in short term, in 2020, have to do about 30% reductions, 30% reductions. So European Union can do a bit more, a bit less, we, we, we shall see because conditions are not exactly in all countries. Uh, but this is something that we are negotiating and this is where we are exchanging uh, our uh, arguments with uh, other developed countries. But right now, just for your information, developed countries, other developed countries which have made pledges 
they do not add up to what we want. They are far behind the European Union, and this is what we are trying to do, push them in order to increase their pledges.